like. Oops, okay. Hello, I'm Melanie from Oxfam, and I'm here with editors. I have Tom, Elliot, and Ed from the band, and. We're here as part of Oxfam's Stand as One campaign to support people who've been forced to flee their homes because of war, conflict, or terrible poverty. Um, today, we're here in northwest Greece. We're in a mountainous region quite near to the border with Albania, and we're in a camp which is called the Lipiade. Uh, this particular camp is currently home to several hundred people. Uh, some of them have been here for up to six months. They've made journeys from Syria, from Afghanistan. They've crossed through various countries along the way and faced some pretty terrible um, and dangerous experiences. And now they're, they're waiting. They're waiting to hear what will happen to them, whether they'll be allowed to uh, claim asylum, um, when they'll be allowed to move. Um, all of these people are desperately trying to get somewhere. Many of them have families, loved ones, in other parts of Europe. So we are here today to hear some of their stories and to share them with you. So, um, welcome to Filippiadi, guys. Hi. And um, Tom, how have you found the morning so far? Uh, it's quite hard to find the words, um, but um, there's a strange kind of just mundanity to the camp, just people with nothing to do which is quite striking, but we spent some time with a lady in our tent over there and she told us about her um, her journey from Afghanistan to get here and her, or she tried multiple, multiple times to get over the border into Turkey and um, she got separated from her husband and two of her children. She and three of her children are, are here um, and she spent a month, I think it was a month here trying to find out or well, not knowing where they were. Uh, she's since found out they're safe in Germany but she's stuck here with no idea how to get to them so it's uh, yeah, it's obviously a very sad story. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how about you? How have you found the, the camp so far? Was it what you expected? Um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously, very, people have very sad stories, but it's also a very positive people. I mean, they're, they're, they've been exceptionally kind to us and very welcoming into their, their tents, which are their homes, and made us tea and coffees. And, you know, we felt very, very welcome to be here, which, you know, People in such a hard times and hardship is, is, you know, it's quite an amazing thing. I think you know one of the big things for me is being here and seeing the work that Oxfam do and other organisations and, and how vital and pivotal that that is to these people's lives at the moment. It's such a it's such a big thing. Um, I think that's been true, and you can really see how people are trying to make a little life for themselves here. They don't know how long they'll be here, but their you know, daily life has to go on. So just over here, you can see how some people have started mini allotments. Um, we've got corn. Um, they told me they've been growing watermelons. Um, they've seen some great tomatoes, quite big ones, getting ready to ripen. Um, you might also be able to see people um, hanging their washing out. We're actually here on... Um, Eid, so this is a, a day of celebration, and um, some of the families we've spoken to have said how normally this would be a time where you get new outfits, you go out as a family, and you, you greet all your neighbours um, with special food. Unfortunately, because of the situation they're in, that's not a tradition they've been able to uphold, but they can still have the, the custom of greeting neighbours and having that sense of community. Um, so that's that's been really special today, to be part of that with them. Um, we're going to do a little bit more of a tour of the camp now to show you some of the, uh, the, the other facilities that are here provided by Oxfam and others. Um, so just to recap for anyone who's joined, um, we're in Filipiada, a camp in northwest Greece for migrants, um, including refugees and people who've been forced to flee their homes because of war or conflict or poverty. And um, we're doing a walk around to see what camp life is like. Um, to my left, um, we have some of the toilet facilities. So Oxfam has been working in the camp providing clean water so everyone has something um, safe to drink. Um, we've built toilets and showers. And at the moment, um, we're building a big renewing the sewage system so it can cope with um, the numbers of people here. 
and um, it looks like uh, you'll be able to see at the moment people have been are living in tents but with winter approaching it's been really vital to uh, move them into something warmer. It's boiling hot right now, it doesn't seem like it it's could ever be, be cool yeah. but um, we've been told we, we're in the mountains and temperatures drop uh, to minus 10, there's snow and apparently the, the winter comes very quickly so it's about being ready as soon as possible. Um, so we had a look at the, some of the containers um, earlier to, to see the kind of outside. They're much more, um, almost like a sort of a mini camper van mm. kind of vibe. And each family will have their own kitchenette, um, their own little bathroom. It'll be less like camping at a festival and much more like a, a home where they can um, create a bit more family life together. I mean, one of, one of the tents we were in earlier, it was beautifully done and you know really well maintained by the people in there and the children have made sort of little art pieces to go up on the walls and they have decorations up. The children go to school actually, they do lessons in was it Greek, uh, German, English and maths. That's right. So they get to have some basic skills in the camp provided by all of the different aid workers that come onto the site. But they're so this tent had a fan and a kettle in but obviously no electricity so <laughs> it was completely useless um, but the hospitality they, they managed to rustle us up some hot water and made us tea and made us feel very welcome so these new um, structures they've all, they're all going to be connected up to electricity that's right yeah so they, they're going to have an actual home like people you know, dignified people should be allowed to have so yeah that's that's going to be wonderful and it, this isn't a very big camp is it how many tents are on this? It's, um, it's about 400 people at the moment, so the numbers fluctuate as, as people come and go, but uh, this particular camp's about 400. Um, across Greece, Oxfam's supporting many more, and actually in Greece in total, uh, there's more than 70,000 uh, people who are in uh, camps like this or makeshift um, uh, centres in abandoned buildings. It could be an old orphanage, an old school, kind of wherever there is space for them. Um, and I think while it's important that they're made ready for winter and people can be comfortable, this isn't a long-term solution. Um, these are temporary camps and while it's important people have a comfortable way of life while they're here, it's about getting them to where they, they want and need to be so they can um, carry on with their lives. Um, so we're going to make our way to meet um, another uh, guy who is from um, a Kurdish area of Syria and um, he was telling us earlier about the journey that he made and um, some of the problems he had along the way. I think um, it was interesting for the band to meet him because they share a passion for music. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, uh, turned out to be a drummer which is <laughs> yeah. quite, quite useful so we had, it was, it's so nice because you don't, you don't, everybody's here for the same sort of reason, they're escaping some trouble or a hardship and they want to make a better life for them or, and their families of course um, but there's always just such a different personal story for everybody you know um, and everybody we've met has got different things that you know people have lost their family along the way or they've been completely separated and it's that dark period where you've lost your um, part of your family or whole of your family while you're travelling to a new, what's meant to be a safer place, and you just have absolutely no idea where they are or how safe they are. And and I think what I have learned today, I mean, everybody seems to be on WhatsApp and Facebook, and the, the communication, global communication is so important to them, and trying to connect to the Wi-Fi and charge their phone is almost as vital as having water, clean water. Yeah. And to find out how their family and friends are doing and, and where they've got to and how they can get to them in the future. So. Yeah, the communication aspect really is blown my mind today. Yeah, no, I think that's been really important to see how technology can help to unite families and how sometimes the not knowing is the hardest yeah, part, yeah. Um, especially for people who've got separated along the way. Uh, we're going to make our way slowly this way. And just to recap for anyone who's joined, um, we're in Greece um, with editors to support Oxfam's Standards One campaign, and that's to help people who've been forced to flee their homes because of war or conflict or poverty. Um, the world's in the middle of the most serious refugee crisis since records began, so millions of people um, have been forced out of their homes. Um, here in Greece we know that there's more than 70,000 in makeshift centres around the country. Um, here in Filipiada, in the northwest area near the mountains, there's several hundred um, living here 
some some people have been here for six months you know they've said to us i never thought this greece would be the hardest part of the journey after crossing the borders after making the terrible journey by sea some people tried I, as the lady we met earlier was saying she tried six times yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's been incredible and now now they're here and feeling pretty frustrated and you think it's important to you know to highlight the fact that these people have spent a lot of money to get here via different means you know smugglers and and other routes and you know they've, they've come from not you know some of them come from poverty but not all of them come from social poverty but they might have spent their entire life savings just to get here and now this is where they've ended up and they're stuck for six months with not many options and not sure of, of what the future holds so we're going to meet um, a Syrian guy called Basani. Hi Basani, thanks for meeting with us again. Nice to see you. Um, so um, Basani doesn't speak English, so I'm going to call in our translator Ronak, who's um, helpfully going to be translating from Kurdish. Um, thank you, Ronak. Of course. And um, so Basani and Ed are both drummers, we discovered yeah. earlier. Um, so yeah, we had, a, we had a little chat earlier about how Bazani got here. and He's actually separated from his family at the moment. And he doesn't really have uh, the communication that we take for granted between uh, our, you know, our wives or girlfriends or family that um, he should do and he deserves. Um, but what he does have, he's brought with him his sort of spirit and his joy and his passion for music and entertainment. And he's actually a drummer. He played us some, some music earlier. And, uh, and what, what do you feel that um, when you play your drum, what, does it, what, what do you feel like? Do you feel like a release? Yes. Do you get given a release? That's <laughs> همومة شوا شوا تكسر همومي وا ووك قلتي دلك شكستي تلاحما دن بسر وشخصي بو عارز وعارز بون سر عارز بون جينا يعني لازم كيف تيد هذا شبر همومي خوا شبير بو Yeah, I feel very. Uh, it makes me a lot calmer when I do some uh, some drumming because like when you are sad, you cannot. Erase sadness with sadness. Uh, you have to kill the sadness with happiness, with music. And I feel when I when I, when I do drums, it's like mending broken hearts. Yeah, I mean it's difficult not to get caught up in the emotion that that gives to you. So, it's I think just coming here and trying to get people involved in a community. I think that's that's what places like they need to succeed. And uh, yeah, and hopefully just the investment and the creation of better homes and electricity, kitchens, social areas for these people to, you know, congregate and enjoy themselves and, and, and lead a better life with their children, especially in the education facilities that are being invested in as well. But, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure to meet people like Bazani and uh, hopefully he's going to play us a little bit of a tune for us now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad that there are people who care about music because um, a lot of people don't really like give it that much attention but it's actually very important especially when you are in like a crisis or a problem it's like the solution so now I'm gonna play for you Oh, I'll join you. I'll follow you.
Okay, so at the beginning it's like this slow um, singing. You know, you have like a slow um, singing without any drums. Yeah. Um, with like it's usually poetic, and then you start the drums. Okay. So this is what he's gonna do. All right. Um, <laughs> brilliant and if people have just joined us that was um, Barsani from Syria who's been playing the traditional Kurdish drum for us along with Ed from the editors and uh, this is for Oxfam Standards One campaign we're here to draw attention to the plight of people who've been forced to leave their homes whether that's because of war or conflict or poverty um, we're here now in Filippiada camp which is in the mountainous area of northwest Greece a lot of people who made the journey from Syria and Afghanistan are here living in tents Many of them have been here for up to six months, so they feel trapped and frustrated. They're waiting to hear what's going to happen to them, where they'll be able to go, and um, when or if their asylum claims will be processed. So it's been a difficult time for people, but music is definitely bringing them together. And um, if you'd like to support the campaign or join in, if you think that um, people seeking safety deserve a safe home, then um, Elliot is going to tell us how you can get involved this weekend. So yeah, if you, like us, believe that these people deserve a stronger voice um, and would like to put pressure on 
our governments to try and do more to help these people, then there's a demo in London on Saturday, which you're very more than welcome to join, and you'll be able to find details on the Oxfam Facebook page. And um, thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this feed, and um, please do support the Standards One campaign if you'd like to help people like Barsani who've been forced to leave their homes.